Hi everyone, this is going to be the first video of the DIY power supply series. We are going to design the power supply using KiCad. So let's talk about the components and overall design of the power supply. Some of the key features I want from our power supply are ability to output plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts, plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and an adjustable voltage via a potentiometer. In addition to these features, I also want the output voltage to have as little noise as possible. All of these features mean this power supply is gonna perform very well with analog electronics such as op-amps, ADCs and so on. But you don't have to worry about it. This power supply is going to be a beginner friendly one. Because we are going to use 78 series linear voltage regulators, which is perfectly suitable for this job. Now let's continue with components and stuff. One of the most important thing to have is a center tap transformer. The center pin of this transformer is going to be our ground reference. So we will be getting two 12 volts alternating current outputs. For turning these outputs to a DC voltage, we'll be using this KBU610 voltage rectifier, which is rated for six amps. This is a bit of an overkill since my transformer is only rated for 25 volt amps. And for the smoothing caps, I'll be using this 2200 microfarads 50 volts electrolytic capacitors. And of course, these caps are for input filtering. For the output filtering, we'll be using 100 nanofarad film capacitors, and in addition to that, also 10 microfarads electrolytic capacitors. We are using the electrolytic capacitors for any transient currents and using the film capacitors for filtering the high frequencies. Okay, now let's talk about the linear voltage regulators. The regulator names that start with 78 is for the positive voltages, and 79s are for negative voltages. And different than other fixed value voltage regulators, LM317 is for adjustable voltage. And of course, for adjusting the voltage, we'll be needing one 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and a 470 ohms resistor. These two are going to form a voltage divider as you can see in the data sheet. So what these voltage regulators do is pretty simple. They take a higher voltage and bring it down to the level we need. But instead of doing this efficiently, they just burn off the extra voltage as heat, which is why they can get quite hot during operation. That is why we need to use heat sinks. Okay, we don't need a giant one, but we still need one. And bigger doesn't always mean better, since this heat sink is gonna take up our valuable board space. This one is actually looking pretty good, so we'll be using one of these for the each regulator. All right, now let's go over the rest of the parts. We'll need two switches, one for the fan and one for the entire power supply. The fan isn't strictly necessary, since our heat sinks are large enough on their own, but I wanted to include it anyway. We'll also use a power cord and a matching connector pair, the male end for the cable and the female panel mount on the power supply case. The female connector even has a built-in fuse socket, which is perfect for added protection. For the potentiometer, fan, fan switch and voltmeter, we'll use the small connectors. Then for the DC output lines, we'll use 5.08 mm screw terminal blocks and wire those to our female banana jacks. Finally, we'll install the combined voltage emitter module. And that's it with the parts. Now let's jump into KiCad. When we first open KiCad, this is the screen that welcomes us. To start creating our schematic, we need to create a new project. So I go to the file, then new project and save it. As you can see, two files appear. One is for the PCB and the other is for the schematic. Let's open the schematic file by double clicking it. And now schematic editor is open. Let's give our project a title using the field at the bottom right corner. I also like to add some extra things here, such as company name. Now we need to start adding components to our schematic. You can do this by clicking Add Symbol button or by simply pressing A on your keyboard. After pressing A, this window pops up. Here you can type and search for the components. On the top side, you'll see a preview of the symbol. And on the bottom, 
there is a footprint section. Don't worry if a component doesn't have a footprint. We'll assign footprints later. I have now added our first component, a tree pin input terminal. Next, let's add our bridge rectifier. Just type its name into the search box and select it. As I mentioned earlier, the middle pin of our transformer will be our ground reference. So now, let's add a ground symbol. You can do that by clicking on the add power symbol icon. It's looking pretty good so far. I've deleted the label from the ground symbol. Since we all know what it is just by looking at it. To connect component pins, we can either click directly on the pins or we press W to create wires. Alright, now let's connect these two together. I think you got the idea by now. Let's speed things up a bit. I am adding two power symbols to the output of the rectifier. The main idea behind using power symbols is that you don't need to connect everything with visible wires. KiCad treats these symbols as connected, even if they don't appear to be. Now let's add the rest of the components. Voltage regulators, capacitors, and I am also entering the capacitor values in their text fields. The positive fixed voltage side is looking good now. We've got the input and output filtering. And I am also adding the net labels to keep everything tidy. Moving on the negative voltage side. You can flip components using X or Y keys, which is super handy. While driving the schematic, make sure to pay attention to the polarity of the electrolytic capacitors. That's really important. Now I have connected the bridge rectifier to the regulators using the power symbols again. You can verify these connections using the highlighting net tool. Next I'm setting up the LM317 adjustable voltage regulator. As you can see, the middle pin of the voltage divider goes to the adjust pin of the LM317. One of the pins of the potentiometer isn't connected to anything. So make sure to press Q to mark it as unconnected. This helps avoid ERC errors later. With this configuration, we'll be able to get an adjustable output between 1.25V and around 28V. By the way, all of these voltage regulators have a voltage drop. So their input voltage must be higher than their output. For example, our transformer outputs 12V AC. But since the center tab is grounded, and the capacitors store the peak voltage, we'll actually get around 16V DC on the input. So we are good to go. Ok, now we are done with setting up the regulators. Let's continue to the outputs. Now I'm adding the output terminal blocks and connecting the regulator outputs using power symbols and net labels. I am also adding pin heaters for the 5V cooling fan and the voltage meter. I am connecting 5V to the meter for the supply voltage and also connecting the LM317's output pin for measuring the output voltage of it. And finally, I'm placing four mounting holes bound for the each corner of the PCB. Our schematic is looking great now. Let's move on to the assigning footprints. Footprints are basically the physical shapes of the components on the PCB. To assign footprints, I'm clicking on the footprint assignment tool. You'll see all of your components listed here. Just click on the component and you can preview its footprint. To choose the correct footprint, you can either measure your physical component or check the datasheet for accurate dimensions. I am now typing the name of each component I'm searching for and matching it with the right footprint. You can use this tool to measure the footprint's dimensions. You want to double check this step, it really matters for PCB layout later. You also have to assign footprints for the mounting holes. I'm assigning M3 holes for them. Ok now, I've assigned all of the footprints. I'm clicking save and continue from here. And we are done with the footprint assignment. Now let's check the ERC for any mistakes. We do have some, but they are not important. Alright, we are done with the major parts. Now let's tidy up our schematic to make it look clean and more professional. I'm using simple tools here, like the text tool to label sections and I'm also driving rectangles around them to keep things organized and easy to understand. For small adjustments, like changing the font or making a rectangle dashed, 
You just double click the item to open its properties and modify the settings. And there we go, as you can see our schematic is complete and looks very professional. Before we move on to the PCB, I want to quickly summarize our circuit. We first take our voltage from the transformer via this terminal, then rectify it using a bridge rectifier and a 2200 microfarads capacitor. After that, the voltage enters our voltage regulators and is converted into the desired voltage level. We also filter the output of the voltage rectifier using these capacitors. And finally, we connect the output of the linear regulators to our terminals. And that's it. It's actually super simple. Okay, that's it for this video guys. We'll be designing and ordering the PCB in the next one. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comment section. So make sure to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.